Jesus now has around 15,000 people in the congregation at this moment. And, 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 and everybody in the congregation is broke. And, and they're listening to Jesus. and They're eating every word that he says out of his mouth spiritually. But then naturally they have needs as well. The Bible says that one of the disciples, and when I was uh, under reading the commentaries and studying different commentaries about this, one theologian depicts the disciples as becoming irritated with the church. Because they had been working and, and following Jesus for around three days now. And the journey was around three days. And now they're finally entering into a desert place where there is no substance. And the disciples get irritated and begin to say, all right, Jesus, it's time for us to send these folks out of the church and because we hungry. I want to talk to you about something. We, we know you can preach, Jesus, and, 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 and you've been feeding all day, but right now, we hungry. Send them away because we know what's in the, in the bank, and it's only enough if we go by ourselves and get a couple pieces of chicken and a biscuit. Jesus says, not today, babies. Not today. Because you've been depending on spiritual. You've been eating out of my mouth. And you've been receiving my word. But now I'm about to put you to work. And they're, they're at a place now that they really don't want to work in ministry. Because they're tired. Sometimes following the leaders make you tired. Going everywhere Jesus went wasn't easy. Jesus would walk all day and all night. And they got tired. I don't know if I got anybody that ever got tired of following your leader. It's quiet, but I, I'm going to preach this thing in the first place. And so you get irritated and you say, you know, can, can we just, can I just take a moment for myself for a moment? Can I just put ministry on pause for just a second and just, and just, just be by myself? And don't you hate it when Jesus said, not today. Not today. You, you can't, you can't be you today. Jesus said to them. And I'm going somewhere with this. They got irritated because they got tired. And you, get, you get worn out working in the church. Working with God will wear you out. Doing what he wants you to do when you don't want to do it no more will wear you out. But it's when you're worn out he can use you the most. It is when you have no more strength he can use you the most. He, they get to a place, he says to one of the disciples, he said, what do we have? Well, we got two fish, five bun and loaves. He said, then I'm going to put all y'all to work. Calls to 15,000 to sit down, organize them by 50s. Twelve brothers got to handle 15,000. I'm not, oh, I see this, Lord. He said, I'm not going to do a miracle until you, until you get out into the body and deal with the folks properly. I'm going, you got to go out there and, and organize 15,000 people to sit by 50s, 100s, and thousands. Move. I ain't moving until you come back with a report that says all is done in the house. Touch your neighbor and say, stop holding up the miracle. Go to work. He did. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. God ain't moving until you go to work. I've been speaking a long time. God says, I'm, I, I know what I got to say next, but, but I'm not going to say it until you do what you're supposed to do. He says, go to work. He says, go deal with the people that I put before you. Say, go deal with the folks, right? I'm getting tired of dealing with them. So, I'm not tired of dealing with you. 
you really don't want me to get tired of you, do you? So you better stop being tired of your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm really now nah, I'm gonna stop being tired of you because because maybe you is the answer to my miracle. The next time I be able to do something for you may open up my miracle for me. The next time I'm able to handle, oh yes, I, I, I'm not tired of picking you up. Uh, so the next time I give you the ride, it may cause my car to get paid off. The next time I give you a place to stay may cause my mortgage to go away. Are you ready for a miracle? It hangs on your work. The next time I pray for you instead of praying for myself. Bless me, God, God, because I'm not blessing you until you intercede for the folks in the house. I'm tired of you trying to get uh, everything. Bless me, God. Anoint me, God. Uh, bring me forth, God. Uh, send me out, God. Uh, anoint me, God. Uh, appoint me, God. Uh, send me, God. God said, I sent you, but you don't want to work with the place where I sent you. You have picks and chooses about who you want to minister to. If they don't smell like you want them to smell, so you move to another bitch. God said, that's the very person that I sent you away so that you can get a miracle. Stop being prejudiced. Touch your neighbor and say, stop being prejudiced. But that ain't even the message. But after, but, but, but after he, he deals with the 5,000, the disciples now have to clean up behind the sheep. Y'all got to get this one. Not only did you have to handle them and minister to them before the miracle, after God gave them the miracle, you had to wait on everybody to get fed. Y'all got to get this. You got to wait on everybody. To eat as much as they want to eat, drop as much food on the floor as they want to drop, and then after they drop everything that they don't want to have no more, then the Lord says, your job ain't over. Because some of us want to leave straight after church. Some of us, soon as... Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. You gone. After a great move of God, you gone. But God said, you still have work. You got to clean up behind the saints. He says, gather up all the fragments. Make sure nothing is left on the ground. I know it's a desert place, but it's holy now since I performed my, my work. And I don't leave my holy place out of order. Everybody got to clean up. Clean up, clean up. Everybody do your share. Clean up. Think of somebody say, you ain't anointed to leave. Oh, I, I, oh, that's a preach right there. You don't have that kind of anointing that makes you get up and walk out. You, touch your neighbor and say, you ain't got that kind of anointing. Because God ain't left. God, sometimes the Lord is just still here. Wait, where y'all going? We got all of this in here. To minister to, we got to pick up all the fragments that's left. People been crying and screaming because of deliverance. What a wonderful miracle. And they left their snot paper on the floor. They didn't know it was on the floor. Somebody got to pick it up. People got deliverance, but they left their spirits in the house. And y'all just skip on out. But not understanding that there's still the demonic spirits that been out of them wandering around. And you ain't hanging out to make sure that everything is clear. Uh, Sometimes you got to say, okay, I know y'all been shouting and, and y'all running up out of here, but I'm going to hang out further to see what next happens. Because sometimes it is after great services that we get in our most sin in the church. That's
that's when we link up together and we begin to uh -huh, talk about gossip. How can you speak in tongue and gossip the next moment? How can bitter and sweet come out of the same fountain? But it's been evident in Judah that after we shout and slob and speak in tongue, we still leave here. Uh, we still just dropped some, some mess but I need some anointed disciples uh, who knows how to hang out and wait and pick up the mess uh, when you see something not like God uh, after the great move of God you ought to be able to go and say but still God is moving don't y'all say that don't y'all the blood of Jesus uh, keep it holy uh, I plead the blood uh, let me clean that mess up let me get that out your mouth cause sometimes we got some stank left on us and sometimes you need somebody like a good mama when when i'm good have you ever i know y'all been here before when you was a child just learning how to take your bath by yourself and you wanted to be independent and mama let you get in the tub and you're taking your bath and she's just watching you you're scrubbing and you're scrubbing and sometimes you just scrub in one area just one area just one area mama i'm clean i i scrubbed but mama knows there's some secret parts of you that after you have washed all wonderfully and she has praised you, she knows how to praise you and still get the soap and say, you did such a wonderful job. You did, yes, I, and you still washing the places that they missed. Good disciples know how to look out for the places that have not been hit by the word. But the disciples got irritated. Guess what they did? Well, y all, y all, y all, watch this. Let's, let's open it up. Let's expound a little bit. It says this, that, that when they had picked up the, 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 the fragments, there were 12 baskets filled of fragment that was left. The disciples might have had a, a, a complaining countenance, an irritated countenance, on their face. I'm so tired of picking up behind folks. I'm, every time we supposed to be doing something, don't nobody want to help out. I'm so tired. Jesus put all their ends in a boat. Check this out. He discerned their irritations. He discerned that they, were, they got frustrated. They were tired of doing, they got tired of cleaning up after miracles. Sometimes we get tired after God has moved, which causes us to get irritated when we have to do work after the praise. And then Jesus says, I got something for you. All 12 of y'all, get y'all anointed about to be tried self in the boat take your ends to the other side the bible says because Jesus stayed with the 15,000 because he doesn't send the sheep out any kind of way y'all ain't ready get in the boat Y'all irritated, get in the boat, go to the other side. Is that my book? He stays and he does what? He deals with them and he sends them away. The Bible says when he sends them away, he doesn't join them. He goes into prayer. That's key. You can never have a great move of God and expect all things to go wonderful for you. The Bible said he immediately goes into prayer. Now why does he pray? He's God manifested in the flesh. So why is his prayer so necessary? Because he often interceded for those who would need him in the future. I was looking at the word intercede one day. And as I was thinking on the word intercede, 
I begin to say, intercede. Inter what, is, what is interceding? Intercede. Enter the seed. I begin to say it over and over. And, and not a deep revelation. I said, Lord, why do we intercede? He said, say it again. Intercede. Say it softly. Intercede. Say it slowly. Intercede. I said, what? Intercede. Most men, people say the word intercede by dictionary.com is one who stands in the middle. Uh huh. But then the Lord said, it's more than standing in the middle. I said, what are you saying, God? He said, intercede. I said, hmm, enter the seed. I said, say it again, God. He says, intercede spiritually means to enter the seed. I said, do what, God? He said, enter the seed. I said, what seed? Whatever seed it is that needs to be destroyed. I said, show me again, God. He said, we have need when we say we're interceding for somebody, we always are praying for them, but we're never going into the seed that is influencing them to go outside of God and God said true interceders will enter the seed and destroy it from the inside out oh oh no 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 here's what I'm saying how you gonna intercede for me and you see something in my life but you said bless him God help him God help him God God said stop praying for them and start dealing with the seed that's influencing them so if you want to pray against homosexuality you got to enter the seed of homosexuality and say I destroy you from the inside out because so the word of God The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. It divides. The word of the Lord said it divides the soul from the what? You, if, you know, anytime you're going to divide something, you got to get in the middle of it. It, it separates the soul from the spirit. The bone from the marrow. And it is a discerner of the very intentions what's in you the intentions of your heart which means you can't pray around my heart you got to know what's in my heart Jesus always went to pray because he had he understood that I got to know what's going on inside of them you can put on a show all day long like you good to go but I need to know what's inside of you so the Bible says he he sends them to the other side. Look as I might have said the other side. So they got in a boat. Don't think it was a cruise ship. It was a boat. And the Bible said, and when they got in the boat, they set sail to go to the other side. And while they were rowing, notice how many was in the boat? Twelve of them. Look as I might have said twelve. They were in the midst of the boat. And as they were rowing, look as I might have said, they were working. Y'all got to get this one. This is important. The assignment that God gave them was, I'm about to put you to work. You can't get to where you're going except you work. He puts them in a boat, tells them to go to the other side. And as they are going to the other side, they get into the middle of the sea. And guess what time it is? Some of us can't, 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 don't even expect to be doing nothing for God at this time. It was 3 a.m. between 3 a.m. and 6. We get upset if we hear past 830. That day went over. They were in the middle of the sea at 3 a.m. in the morning. Rowing. To their next assignment. And guess what happened? All hell broke loose. The Bible says they were in the middle of the sea and there came a tempest. 
boisterous wind. It was beating them, but they were rowing. And this is important. This is, this is key. The Bible said that they were rowing, and while they were rowing, they got agitated. They got irritated at the work. Here come Jesus. I, I have some questions to ask about this. Jesus knew what time to start walking. The Bible says, and he struck out to walking, observing them being agitated by the work. Ain't that something? God put you to work and let you get frustrated in the work. Because some of us don't think we ought to be frustrated in ministry. I'm going to talk to us today. True ministry brings about frustrations. You ain't in a church if you ain't frustrated in church when it comes to doing ministry. You ain't putting forth no effort then. You, you might as well go ahead and, and drop your money at the drop box and turn around and go home. I, I, yeah, say three Hail Marys and call it a day. Drink you some juice and a, and, a, and, a, and a rich cracker and call it a day. But true ministry go bring forth work. And anytime you work it, go, go bring some agitation. Because every time you work, hell go break out. I don't know why we think that we shouldn't go through nothing in ministry. Especially when God has put you in a place and tells you where you're going. I wish I had somebody over here. I get up. Have you ever got upset because God put you in a place and the place he put you in is causing hell in your life? But guess what? You're in the midst of hell, but if you stop rowing, you're going to sink. you in the midst of a tempestuous wind. But I hear the Lord say, if you stop rowing, uh, you about to sink. And by the way, he put all 12 of y'all attitude folks together. How is it that in ministry, the very folks I should be working with is the very folks I can't stand sometimes? I got an attitude, they got an attitude, we all got an attitude in the boat. But guess what? Tell your neighbor that you got an attitude with, go ahead and look at them and say, yes, I got an attitude right now. But guess what? You better not stop rowing. Touch your neighbor and say, you might, can't, you, might, you might not feel like being here today, but you better not stop rowing. This is why he put all 12 in the boat together. Because all 12 had to row together. It means that you have to come to a place where your attitude and your frustration does not count if you want to save your life.